afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our regularly scheduled meeting of the Trade, Travel, and Tourism Committee. I'm Councilwoman Tracy Park, Chair of the Committee. Madam Clerk, would you please, Mr. Clerk today, sorry, Andrew, would you please call the roll? Uh, Councilmember Park. Present. Councilmember McOsker. Here. Councilmember Soto Martinez. Here. Three members on a quorum, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. So that brings us to public comment. Members of the public wishing to give public comment can sign up at the kiosk in the back of the room. You will be given one minute for general public comment and up to two minutes for multiple items. So we will go ahead and get started with public comment. I'm not synced to you. Can we have Herman Herman 666 come up, please? You will have one minute for general public comment and up to two minutes for multiple item comment. Got it, got it, boss. Oh. Oh, we're on? All right. So can you tell us what items? Uh, uh, Madam uh, Tracy, is it park or beach? I'm going to speak on all items and non-agenda public comment, a total of three minutes for the record. Go ahead. So we got some niggas, appointees like Taylor Bakewell to the Board of Tourism Commission ending June 2027. Then we got another nigga named Victor Nararo. Airport commissioner, he could fly his ass to Matanamo Bay to drop off current price. Then we got another nigga regarding mayor's relative appointment of Courtney Labau to the airport commissioner. We got a lot of people flying up and down the skies nowadays, right? Then we go to item six, chief executive world airport to provide verbal quarter report. Well, the only fucking quarter reports you need is get that fucking airport moving because people are standing around getting stupid down there, especially with all that goddamn traffic. But you niggas like that because you get paid over time. Then we go to item seven regarding categorical exemption regarding Los Angeles City sequel. But the Board of Airport Commissioners report reflects a five-year lease. Well, in Singapore, Singapore Airlines has been known for niggers wanting to open up the doors and let people fly out for free. Now, we can't have that kind of bullshit. So uh, I object to that, and I think we ought to send Curran Price and his dumb fat bitch ex-wife soon-to-be, Miss Richardson, down to there. To the items, please. Yeah, now into my non-agenda public comment. Let the record reflect how far is the nigger going to, yeah. This is what we're going to do to the dirty niggers. A dirty nigger like Karen Price and his bitch wife, Miss, well, he has two wives, but this one in particular is Miss Richardson, because we know that that bitch has been taking money from the public with those development issues like your former boss, Jose Luis Weasel, in this article, it talks about another whole whole asshole scandal in L.A. recent involved disgraced former dumbass wetback Jose Weezer. Mr. Mr. Herman, Mr. Yeah. Herman. Non-agenda how, how, public comment, foo. Right, for right, the right, with right, comments right, regarding right. the jurisdiction of this right. committee. So and, travel, and, trade, and, and tourism. I'm trying to save America from corruption, motherfucker. So don't interrupt me because, like I said, this is non-agenda public comment. And, yeah, it sounds rough. It sounds vulgar. It sounds venomous. But you're dumb fucking COVID shit you brought okay. to my country. You're, you're way this whole outside the bounds of, of yeah. the matters before this committee, and now you're out of time. Yeah, here you go, for the record. Our next, call, or our next speaker is Beach at Park, please. One more time, Beach at Park. Okay, moving on to our next caller, please. Our next speaker, Dan Guest. Dan Guest, going once, going twice. Okay, 
If you signed up under the name JoJo Not to Florida, you're up now. Anyone? Okay, moving on, please. Susan Boyton. Going once, going twice. Susan Boyton. Okay, next, please. That concludes public comment. All right, thank you very much. That will conclude public comment for today. Um, unless there is any objections from my colleagues, I would like to move items one, two, and three on consent, please. Hearing no objections, Mr. Clerk, if you would please call the roll. Park. Yes. McCoster. Yes. Soto Martinez. Yes. Three eyes, and those items have been approved. Thank you very much. Uh, so in the interest of time this afternoon, I would like to consider items four and five together. So Mr. Clerk, if you would please read those items for us. Certainly. <clears throat> Communications from the mayor relative to the appointment of Victor Naro and Courtney Labau to the Board of Airport Commissioners for the terms ending June 30th, 2026 and June 30th, 2024. Thank you, um, and I believe that we have Mr. Naro and Ms. LeBeau with us. If you two wouldn't mind, please come forward and have a seat at the table. All right, thank you both for joining us today, as well as your interest in serving on the Airport Commission, which oversees one of the greatest economic engines in our city. Um, as the airport completes major capital improvements and breaks ground on new projects, all with an eye towards 2028 and the Olympics, the work of this board carries even greater weight and significance. So having served both of you on commissions previously, I really am grateful to your willingness to serve here, and I appreciate you giving us time in this committee to get to know you a little bit more. Um, I'm going to start with you, Ms. LeBeau, and ask you to tell me a little bit about your interest in serving in this role. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate your time and consideration on this. I'm, I'm honored to be considered. Uh, as a current ethics commissioner for the city, uh, I've loved serving and am honored um, and, and looking especially forward to, if confirmed, using some of my national security experience. Uh, on the airport commission, uh, as obviously that's a huge component of uh, the safety and security of all the passengers and the you know locals that are there as well, especially leading up to all of the the main events that we are having at the World Cup as well, in addition to the um, the Olympics. So I'm really excited to, uh, if confirmed, join an amazing uh, staff and uh, other commissioners, and looking forward to uh, making LAX and Van Nuys uh, what it can be. Thank you, and 2026 will be upon us before Very we soon. even know it. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Naro, same question. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about your interest in serving in this role. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Um, thank you both for also meeting with me last week. Um, this is my fifth commission I'll be serving on. Since 2005, I have been serving on uh, four different commissions. Uh, the most recent one is the Cannabis Commission for six and a half years. and. You know, Los Angeles is, is the number one destination in the whole world, and you know, um, it's the third busiest airport in the in the you know in the entire world. And um, I just think it's so vital to not just uh, um, you know Los Angeles as the destination place for tourism and travel, but also um, it's a welcoming to the you know the people leaving to other destinations, but people coming in. I live in Sherman Oaks, so I do know about the noise issue and the community advisory uh, committees out there that are addressing this issue, and I think I can serve a purpose there. My work at the uh, UCLA Labor Center at UCLA Labor Studies is a um, major focus on workforce development and local hiring. I took the time this past few days to um, literally look through hundreds of pages of documents of um, the LAWA and also um, LAX, and this morning I had a huge uh, briefing um, with the LAWA staff. I'm totally grateful to them. But workforce development, local uh, initiatives, hiring, I've done a lot of research in there. I think I can bring that into the um, process. 
I do know the um, structure of city hall and city government based on my serving on the other commissions. Um, anywhere from hiring to permit, the permit um, process, and I think I could be helpful in that. But I, you know, I noticed uh, uh, they have done a lot with the capital improvement plans, the strategic plans. I see my role is helping facilitate the implementation because a lot, the lot of us have a top, I mean, I really admire the work that they do and I would like to help them in that process as well. So looking forward to this and I hope to um, have your support. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for that. And um, I, I think of our commissions across the city, the airport commission is one of the most active and I think probably will involve a steep learning curve. Uh, certainly, I, I think, I, I know I speak for me and probably for my colleagues here as well. These are massive operations and all of us um, have a lot to learn. Um, Mr. Nari, you mentioned some steps that you took to begin preparing for this. You mentioned that you had looked at several hundred pages of documents and that you had a briefing with Wawa today. Uh, I'm really glad to hear that. Thank you. Um, based on your review of those materials and those conversations, did you have any sort of big, big takeaways, any major priorities that came through to you from those conversations? Yes, I, I, the capital improvement plan, you know, they've done great work with the phase one. The phase two is the critical piece and um, they're gonna need a lot of support from the commissioners in many ways to support that, that's one to take away. The other is the community engagement, you know, not just in LAX, but also in Van Nuys, uh, you know, the Westchester, City of Westchester, uh, El Segundo, Inglewood, and then the areas of, in, around the Van Nuys Airport. Um, I, I'm really impressed with the civic engagement, the transparency to engage with community dialogue to get input. There's a, um, the workforce development plan, I think is something that, um, it's of importance to me because of the, um, the you know, the uh, opportunities that LAX can create, um, not just for the LA economy, for, but for local high and for workers. And then um, the strategic planning, I mean, it's a very thoughtful, visionary staff. Um, I, you know, I really admire the work that they do and I really want to thank Becker's here today, but there was others that have helped along the way, but those are the things that come to mind right now, thank you. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Ms. LeBeau, same question to you. Maybe you can just talk to us a little bit about what you've done to prepare for this position. Well, I have subscribed from the moment that I heard that this was sort of percolating, I've subscribed to the agenda uh, for LALA and I've uh, watched the videos of every single one of them since about March. Uh, and I, I feel, um, you know, to the extent that I can outside of having had an orientation and whatnot, uh, ready and, and uh, willing to hit the ground running with a, a good sense of knowledge. Um, you know, and, and in the past, uh, I have worked in the national security world in counterterrorism for uh, Department of Homeland Security as a federal contractor. So I've worked with airport police in the past. I've worked with all of the federal agencies and partners and am uh, familiar in that zone as well uh, as to some of the issues at hand at LAWA for both airports. Um, and feel like that's one of the main things that I can be contributing. You know, I have a unique background in, in terms of uh, my business experience, understanding contracts and all of the infrastructure uh, contracts and procurement issues that are very important to me as well that are happening at LAWA, and uh, as well as the national security side, which is super important in keeping our, uh, not only our travelers safe, but also, you know, the locals safe and the workers safe that are at both of those airports. Uh, so I have, um, thought a lot about how I can contribute to the commission uh, should I be confirmed. And I think on, uh, especially on the security and the safety side with all of those events leading up to Los Angeles, I would love to dig deep in that arena and uh, work um, in conjunction with uh, the airport police as well as all of the, all of the inter intergovernmental agencies that are super important at LAWA. Um, and that's something that I've done uh, at, in the past uh, working with Department of Homeland Security. So. Um, I feel pretty equipped thus far. Thank you, and thank you for putting in uh, the time to do that. Um, you know, LA is, LAX in particular, and, and Van Nuys as well are unique in that they are both major operations that abut residential uses. So Mr. Naro, I wanna come back to you and pick up on a thread that you mentioned in a prior answer, and that relates to community engagement. Um, so, 
maybe you can just talk to us a little bit about how you're going to prioritize that community impact and what would be your approach to balancing the needs of our residential community with the needs of the airport to do major developments and move the business of the airport forward. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, I will work with, the, I, th I think the uh, law, you know, the law was to have are doing a good job already of um, engaging with the community so how I can best integrate. Uh, one of my strengths is uh, community interaction and community uh, you know, relationship building. As I've done that in many different ways. And, you know, at the Neighborhood Council and the Cannabis Commission, I had to deal with a lot of, you know, as you know, there was major pushback by Neighborhood Councils and other, other local civic groups. And I assisted the department with engagement with how to um, address a lot of the concerns about the cannabis industry uh, going into certain neighborhoods and, um, and really uh, active listening, but also um, be able to... Um, provide feedback and um, try to f information, because many times it's also lack of information. For example, uh, my understanding and right now some of the concerns is about expansion. It's not really expansion that's happening there, but it's about how to control the noise pollution and you know the, all the different issues that impact the quality of life and how to you know, engage in that, in that respect, provide useful information, but also be a good listener, which is something I, I do very well. Well, well, thank you for that. And, uh, you know, as we've spoken about before, there's a lot of stakeholders and interests in and around the airport, whether it is, you know, the airport, LAWA, the communities, labor, the business in and around the airport, all of those are important voices. And um, it's important that they all have an opportunity to be heard and that the interests and needs of all of our stakeholders are being considered, so thank you. Uh, one more cup, one more question, and um, Ms. LeBeau, no offense, I'm going to skip you on this one because you've already spoken at length about public safety and, and that being a priority for you, so I'll just wrap up with one more question to you, Mr. Naro. Um, with the World Cup and the Olympics and other major events uh, happening in Los Angeles in coming years, a lot of our capital improvement projects from the um, automated people mover to the pedestrian focused amenities in the central terminal area, that's going to all be coming online right around the time that we start hosting these events. And that means that we're going to be bringing more people than ever into our airport. So maybe talk to me a little bit about your thinking in terms of keeping the traveling public as well as workers at the airport safe. Yes, uh, I actually did read up over the weekend about the airport safety, uh, all the different components, and I was trying to reach out to also Chief uh, Rambo to see if I can have a, a set up a meeting where I can do a walkthrough with him because I have some questions about some of the terminology and everything. But for lack of you know, because of time, we weren't able to uh, connect before this meeting. But I do plan to follow up on that. You know uh, that. This issue with resources, I, I think they don't do, do, you know, it's very competitive now to hire and they are trying to hire new officers, um, especially security officers. And what happens is they lose them to other departments so we, that they come up in the, my conversation with them and what I can be, do best to help them support that to um, make sure they get the adequate staff and they need. Uh, I know with the, the people mover um, system, that's gonna require another analysis of a, another analysis of public safety. And, you know, that's going to come up as that phase comes up and that's, uh, you know, totally committed to figuring out how I can be help. I don't have a public safety background, but I have, you know, a good understanding of public safety and I have um, addressed that issue in many different ways uh, with my relationship building with LAPD leadership over the years. And, my hope is I can, how best I can facilitate. I, I know we have some great people that have that background, but how, what role can I play to help um, facilitate that, especially with the uh, phase two expansion and the, these upcoming major events that happen in the FIFA World Cup and the Olympics. So. Well, thank you for that. Um, and I hope that you will move forward with that conversation with them. And I hope that you get to spend some time actually out with our airport police to get a sense of how widespread their operation is and the different 
types of security services they provide uh, to the public and to the community. So I don't have any other questions at this time. I'd like to kick it over to Council Member McCosker if he has any questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. I really appreciate those thoughtful questions. Really thorough and covered a lot of the topics that I care about. And I, and I know the feeling, having uh, the Port of Los Angeles in my district, I know the feeling of, uh, of caring for such an important asset. And I admire the, uh, the line of questioning and the commitment to, um, uh, to this asset, uh, the world airports, especially LAX. Um, I want to follow up on the labor question. Uh, or I mean the public safety question, but I want to ask it as a labor question. I mean, I appreciate you reaching out, and this is uh, for Mr. Naro. I appreciate you reaching out to Chief Rambo, and I think that's an important relationship for any commissioner to have, and the commission as a whole to have, for the make sure we ad uh, provide adequate public safety. But I want to be really clear, too, that the other voices is labor. Uh, and we have represented a represented group there at the airport police, and we have represented groups all across the spectrum at the airport. I want to make sure that, that, that uh, particularly you, uh, Mr. Naro, um, you understand the importance of reaching out to labor and understanding that they have a role in their wages, hours, working conditions, and they have an important voice working with management uh, to create a, a safe atmosphere throughout the whole World Airport system. So I just like want you to address the um, what you feel is the importance uh, of organized labor within public safety. Thank you so much. Generally, every worker deserves a union. Uh, you know, law enforcement officers, just like any other worker, the service union. And I will, I, I, I don't know, um, I know it's not the uh, police protective league, the LAPD union, but it's another union at the airport. So I will make a commitment to meet with um, the union representatives as well. But, you know, I, I think um, police officers, like other workers, they serve uh, a right to good wages and benefits. Related question, and I think it's a, I hope it's a softball for you, Mr. Naro, but I want to also um, have you reflect on the importance of the airport system as a participant in um, other contracts and other labor groups and other workers groups that may not be organized, and the importance of making sure that with all of our contracting, with all of our um, development work, with all of the, the, the related entities that come in and provide services and provide labor and provide materials uh, that we have to make sure that we're using our role to ensure that everyone is paid. We have to protect against wage theft. We have to protect against, um, uh, you know, everything in the system that comes from our public dollars and our, uh, and our activity in this sphere to make sure everyone gets paid and that this is a, um, an ethic that you'll be committed to as a commissioner. I appreciate the thoughtful question. Uh, what I want to add to that is, you know, I, I participate in the process to create the LA uh, Wage Staff Enforcement Policy, the Office of Wage Standards. That was, uh, I worked on creating that department. I have a strong working relationship with the Labor Standards and, uh, Enforcement Office at the Labor Commissioner's Office, and because I think, you know, the, the majority of workers not, are not unionized. That's the reality. We're at six percent union density in the private sector, so. There will be a lot, of, there's a lot of non-union workers that also um, have to have, uh, you know, their rights protected. And I will, um, whenever possible, and I think the opportunity comes up, uh, connect, uh, uh, you know, the staff at our and, and um, with these departments, if, if the need comes, if there's an issue addressing non-union workers, because I think every worker deserves protections. Thank you. I have nothing else, Madam Chair. Councilmember Soto Martinez. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Uh, just have one question for both for the two of you. Uh, if a, if if confirmed and appointed, uh, it'll be your sort of multiple uh, commissions that you've served. Uh, as you all know, um, you know it, it takes sort of a labor of love to be so committed to the city. Uh, and just so I'm just my question is like, you know, what inspires y'all to serve in the community, and what lessons learned from previous commissions do you? Bring, hope to bring into into this uh, this new role. I appreciate that question a lot. Um, services in my family. I'm a native Angelino. My mom served on the library board. 
uh, in Monrovia where I grew up, you know, I grew up with that uh, sort of mentality and it's been an honor to serve the city in the capacity that I have previously. And um, I live here, I wanna give back. Um, and I, you know, you look at where can your skills be best utilized. And I think airport in combining, you know, my background of, um, understanding investments in finance and contracts and procurement, all of that, as well as the national security side is, um, I'm excited to serve in that capacity if, if confirmed. So that is what excites me, especially with the world events um, coming up. What I have learned in the past, um, I've learned a lot about ethics, I will tell you that. I've uh, learned the importance of good governance, uh, the importance of uh, collaboration across, um, you know, uh, not only city agencies um, and local agen agencies and uh, federal agencies, but also uh, in collaborating with you guys. Um, you know, this is in your district, Councilmember Park, and um, this is an important um, enterprise to collaborate on, not just have us be making the decisions and have the oversight along with the executives there, but also have the collaboration uh, so that it's a holistic approach to um, getting the grace, greatest outcome possible. Uh, so I look forward to um, having that holistic, multi-pronged approach with all of us uh, for the betterment of both of the airports. So uh, thank you for that question. I mean, I do have a migration story, like many of us in Los Angeles, and I was not born in this country, but I arrived, the, I arrived to this country when I was four years old. I grew up in New York City, and you know, a lot of violence and poverty in the 1960s and 70s, and there's no, like, I think that's what instilled in me the passion for justice, and the passion for op creating opportunities for others. I, I don't wanna see what people I had to go through and what my mother and, and father had to go through and others in my neighborhood. And um, Los Angeles is my home now. It's, you know, there's a debate between whether I'm tied to Brooklyn or Los Angeles. Sometimes it goes back and forth. But Los Angeles, I've been here for 31 years. Um, I think it, it's a beautiful city. We coexist in many. We don't get it right. I know there's a lot of clash. Um, I know there's a lot of disagreements. And I know there's a lot of sometimes um, you know, it could be antagonistic, but I think City Hall, um, and it really has such an important role in the city of Los Angeles, and whatever I can do, I, I, I found the commission process is a way for me to, um, to really connect um, the City Hall and City Departments with community members in a way that's meaningful, a way that brings um, um, the quality of life that we all deserve, and, and it's an inclusive city, but the, I know that's difficult because there's different viewpoints and everything, but I have learned to be a good listener and I've learned that you know, um, being a public servant to my city, it, it's a commission, it takes up a lot of work. Every commission I have been on, it takes up a lot of hours a week. I think this commission is gonna be no different, um, but it's uh, an opportunity that I don't take for granted to be able to serve uh, the city in a way that I think I can have a uh, meaningful impact. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. You know, I, I, this is not a question, I'll just make some comments. Um, you know, I, I worked at the airport for three years, uh, you know, so I sort of have a unique experience. I don't know if my colleagues worked at the airport, um, but I'll say something about the, that atmosphere. Um, it's its own world, um, and, and the workers there, all the workers, are very proud to work at the airport. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's uh, you know, folks selling you a magazine or serving you food or the people that protect the airport. I they care so much for the airport. And they've gone through so many things. If you talk to the more senior folks, you know, they remember the redevelopment of the 90s where uh, you know, the living wage was created and, uh, and sort of several laws. They went through September 11th. Uh, there's stories about that. Uh, the Terminal 3 shooting that happened some years ago, uh, talked to a lot of workers that experienced that. The Muslim ban, uh, you, you know, it, it's, and, and they speak with it with so much pride because they know that they're sometimes the last face that is seen by the people who live in the city. And many times the first face they see when they la land in Los Angeles. Um, and it's a difficult place to be because, uh, as Councilmember Park probably knows, there's a lot of neighborhood politics about you know, what happens at LAWA, 
you got labor uh, who has like just a big presence there, businesses, the travelers, right? And on top of that, you got to deal with us, right? So it's a it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot there. So you know, I I hope and and I. I left, after three years of being the organizer there, I left also with a deep sense of pride uh, for the airport because of how unique and special it is. And so I hope that um, you, know, you sort of really immerse yourself in that culture uh, because people just really, really care about that airport. And you know, I hope if pointed that you all care, you will, will leave you're not caring as much as I care about the airport. Uh, and so if appointed, again, uh, good luck. Thank you for sharing your experience and your very unique insight on these um, issues and these appointments. Um, and again, I appreciate you both being here and Mr. Naro, I appreciate that you took the time to have the briefings and, and to spend some time getting acquainted with the issues. That really resonates with me that you did that. So thank you. Um, I know that I heard these items together, but I do want to do a separate vote on them. Um, so on item four, I'd like to move that we approve Mr. Naro's appointment to the Board of Airport Commissioners. Mr. Clerk, if you would, please call the roll. Park? Yes. McOsker? Yes. Soto Martinez? Yes. Three ayes, and the appointee has been approved. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. On item five, I'd like to move that we approve Ms. LeBow's appointment to the Board of Airport Commissioners. Please call the roll. Park? Yes. McOsker? Yes. Soto Martinez? Yes. Three eyes and the appointee has been approved. Thank you both for your willingness to serve, and I know that we all look forward to a long, productive working relationship with both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, with that, um, I believe that we are now on item six. Mr. Clerk, if you would please read that item for us. Item six, Chief Executive Officer, Los Angeles World Airports to provide verbal quarterly report. Right. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, really appreciate you as always. Rebecca, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you so much. As you can see, I am not Justin Urbachi, our Chief <laughs> Executive <laughs> Officer. Um, I'm not nearly as good looking and insightful. However, I'm here today in his place as he has to chair a meeting for which he is uh, one of the leaders of, an, in, of a national uh, airports group. So thank you for having me today. I was asked to prevent, present verbally on three different topics, so I have those for you here today. Um, I will be reading some notes so I get them right. I don't want to get uh, wrong information out there, and of course I'm happy to take questions if you have any. So Becca Doughton, Chief Airport Affairs Officer at Los Angeles World Airports. First update is on the Manitoba West briefing regarding Lulu's place that happened on June 8th. 35 residents um, attended the meeting. It was widely promoted. Uh, throughout the complex, which is uh, adjacent to where Lulu's place will be built if it moves forward. The project team during the meeting delivered an extensive presentation that included site plans and renderings, and a lead landscape and lead landscape architects from Rios shared plans for planning on the site. Several longtime residents were not aware of LAWA's prior north side approvals and had some questions about that. Others raised concerns that they previously shared with LAWA and CD11 regarding safety and homelessness and questions about noise. At least five residents expressed their strong, strong support for the project, and several have since reached out to ask how they can help move it forward so they can quickly, quickly because they're eager to have the amenities in their backyard. The questions were answered that they were able to answer, and for those that they weren't, they told them they would come back when they have further uh, information to share. The Lulu's Place planning team is planning an open house for the entire community later this summer when the environmental compliance process is complete to share those findings along with new renderings and detailed designs. The project team will also present a condensed version of these findings when they're complete, along with all the other updates regarding the project, to the neighborhood council, as well as other interested community groups as requested and those that we have been working with throughout the process. We're currently tracking to be complete with the environmental compliance process and ready for briefings in July and August. Any questions on that one? Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, well, I appreciate that update and you sharing the um, info on the community outreach on Lulu's. I appreciate that and I know that you will continue to do that as these plans are refined. Um, I don't have uh, any other questions, but I, I do want to just publicly 
re reiterate my position as chair of this committee regarding our actions with respect to Van Nuys Airport. Mm -hmm. um, I, I am of the view that until there is a seated representative in CD6, which we should have very shortly, uh, we're not going to consider any substantive items in this committee that impact the airport and the surrounding communities. I, I am a big believer that Van Nuys deserves representation, not 13 other council members making consequential decisions on behalf of those communities. So I just want to let you know that that's where I am um, on Van Nuys. Uh, so with that, I will look forward to considering these reports related to the charter flight operations and the RFPs in addition to some of the other things that we've talked about uh, with, with Van Nuys. So, I just wanted to make that comment and yeah, turn it, it, open it up to questions. It, in Chair Park on that, I can give a short update, um, sure. just verbal regarding, but not get into depth regarding okay. Van Nuys if you'd like. Sure. Especially regarding the charter by seat operations, which we believe should not be happening at Van Nuys right now. However, um, the companies that are participating in it do believe that they have the right to do so. So we have sent letters to three different airlines, uh, excuse me, not airlines, uh, companies operating this charter by the seat uh, service. Uh, two of them have responded saying they believe they're within their rights to do so. We believe there's a gray area within um, statute and within regulation. So we are working with Councilmember Cardenas' office. We got off the phone with his office earlier today. They have legislative language that they intend to introduce as a floor amendment uh, during the FAA reauthorization pro uh, process, asking that um, Van Nuys and other general aviation airports be afforded the opportunity to say no, we don't want them at our airport. We're not saying anyone needs to say no. We're, we're laying people, we're asking that they be allowed, we be allowed to opt in to say no, that's not the correct operation for our airport. Additionally, um, they're gonna be sending a letter to USDOT, we believe, asking them to clarify their, um, the, their, their, their regulations so that we can better understand um, our ability to do so and we'll follow up with our own letter from um, our team as well, uh, asking as well that they clarify that we are allowed to um, not have those operations at our airport. So we are um, uh, intent on continuing to pursue uh, efforts that would allow us to not have those uh, operators at Van Nuys Airport. Well, I appreciate that and uh, appreciate everyone's cooperation and just bearing with us. We are so close to this uh, election and yeah. uh, I think probably all of us feel the same that it is really important for every community in Los Angeles to have a council member and, and to have someone advocating and representing them. So um, really appreciate the update on that as well. Um, and I will turn it over to my colleagues if they have any questions. Council I don't have Oscar. any questions, but I, I just want to just say expressly that I agree with the chair. It makes, makes perfect sense for us to uh, stay in a holding pattern, if you will. I mean, I do appreciate the fact that the, um, the, the con congressional office is, you know, putting the city in a position to be able to exercise um, some discretion in the in the future, but let's hold that for the for advice from the council office. Other questions? All right, thank you. Um, so I really do appreciate this, and these quarterly updates are great just to keep the communication open and flowing. Um, I do have a request for your next quarterly report, re report um, and that is. I would appreciate it if LAWA could maybe talk to and work with Metro and report back to us on the feasibility and effectiveness of including station parking lots along transit lines that have a high concentration of LAX employees. That would help alleviate parking congestion at LAX for airport employees. So such as the Hyde Park K-Line station there are actually hundreds of LAX employees who live within a mile radius uh, there. So just wondering if maybe, if I could just ask you to have that conversation and see if we can yes, of course. talk about that with Yeah, them. we'd be happy to bring that back next time. Fan Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, so since we're going to keep this in committee, no action for us to take at this point, and we'll see you again soon. Great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Rebecca. Thank you. All right, we always appreciate us. airport um, references and, and analogies. <laughs> Touch and go. Exactly. <laughs> Although, to be fair, that was pretty low-hanging fruit. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, we but credit that. where credit's due, Councilmember McCosker. <laughs> uh, so that brings us to item seven. Mr. Clerk, if you could please read it for us. Item number seven, Board of Airport Commissioner's report relative to approving a five-year lease with Singapore Airlines Limited covering the property located at 6181 West Imperial Highway within the Los Angeles International Airport. All right. All right, thank you for being here. 
perhaps Welcome. you can give us a presentation on this. Yeah, thank you. My name is Mark Adams. I'm the Government Affairs Director for Los Angeles World Airports, and I appreciate the opportunity to present this item here today. Uh, the item in front of you is a uh, basically a lease extension. It's a new lease um, replacing a 25-year lease that we had with Singapore Airlines at their cargo facility on Imperial Highway. Um, this is a five-year lease, just uh, allowing them to continue operating in the facility they're currently occupying, and it will allow us to proceed with the cargo redevelopment studies that were discussed at the last committee meeting. Um, we have the, the, the consultant contractors on board looking at those um, cargo redevelopments. And so this is um, just basically keeping Singapore Airlines in place for the time being. You'll note that there is a substantial rate increase. And the reason for that is because under their 25-year lease, um, they built the cargo, the, the hangar, if you will, where they do their uh, cargo processing. And uh, at the end of their 25-year lease, which expired this year, that facility reverted to our ownership and so therefore we now own it and are leasing it to them so the significant increase in the rent is due to that uh, reversion of that property to us and we are um, leasing their the the, the 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 facility that they built back to them effectively that's all there is to this one well, thank you for that, and thank you for sort of addressing the overlay here with the effort to modernize the, the cargo facilities. That actually answered one of the questions that I had for you. But I do have another one. Um, I think Singapore's lease expired in March, and so we're basically going to be backdating this lease. And I'm just wondering, what can we do to get these things in front of us before they expire? Well, we, we try to get the, I mean, this went to our board in February, which obviously didn't leave us a lot of time to do this. Um, we, under the, under our real estate guidelines, uh, if, if a lease expires, the tenant go, can go into holdover terms, basically, which is what, what happens here. Um, we, we do everything we can to get the leases to our commission. Um, in a timely fashion, and then there's a, a processing time for, you know, we would have hopefully had it here a little sooner than, than June, but um, I think, you know, we, we do our best to try to get things to, to the council before they expire, but um, we understand that um, because of the reviews that happen in between our board approval and, and reaching here, sometimes that, that can take some time as well. So, um, you know, it, it's all, always our intent to get here before the expiration of the lease, but we are, um, you know, there, there was no, because this is a lease, it, you know, and they go into holdover, it's, it's not really a, a contractual problem, per se. Okay. Good to know. Mm -hmm. I just, as chair of this committee, prefer to do things in advance, not after the fact is all. Understood. Understood why, though. Appreciate that. I don't have any other questions. Councilmember McCosker? No, nothing. Thank you. I have a couple. Okay, yeah, go for it. Yeah, so thank you so much. Uh, w what's the average uh, rent that you could charge for a similar, uh, what, well, what they're getting similar? Well, we basically have a, a rent that is charged per square foot, basically. And so if I recall, the, the per square foot rent for the, 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 the cargo building under this lease is $25.55 per square foot per year. And there's a land rental rate and rent that's four dollars and eighty nine cents per square foot per year, and then aircraft parking areas is 0 .94, 94 cents per square foot per year, and automobile parking is forty eight cents per square foot per year. So it's all broken out based on the type of use. Right. But like, what's the fair market va value of, of, of what? Well, that's based on an that's based on appraisals that that we determine that that. So I, I would I would say that that is considered a fair market. Oh, okay. Um, so right. the, yeah. the way you got to this number is by looking at other, yes. other yeah. areas and what. Yes, we, okay. we we do we go through a pro professional appraisal to determine those gotcha. uh, I rates, okay. and we we do adjust those rates every uh, every so often. Got it. I understand. Just want to try and see how we got to this number. Okay, that's all my question. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, with that, I would move that we approve item seven. Mr. Cook, please call the roll. Park? Yes. McCosker? Yes. Soto Martinez? Yes. Three ayes, and the item has been approved.
All right, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Is there anything else before the committee? The desk is clear. All right, thank you. This meeting is adjourned.